Each F-15 group is a self-contained unit. Ground staff for the F-15 are highly skilled technicians. And in today's Air Force, women often work alongside men, where the requirement is more for skill than for strength. compared to the F-15, well, it's a good thing we're on the same side. Uh, he can uh, touch me a little bit further out uh, with his coordinates, uh, but uh, once we get in close, it's, uh, it's going to be a real tight match. Uh, I can pull more G's than he can, and uh, we've got basically the same ordinance in close. Uh, so I'm just glad uh, that I'm able to fly into the target area with this guy and not against him. Okay, the F-15E, I haven't personally flown because it's been introduced after I retired. But I have worked closely with the F-15E. I'm familiar with its capabilities, and I've talked to a lot of the pilots who are flying it now. And the thing that continues to amaze me and them as well is that every time it's asked to do something in a new environment or a new situation, it exceeds its expectations. Uh, at red flag uh, deployments to the... Uh, far north in Alaska. Uh, all the systems have been very, very uh, active and very, very good. And the aircraft is just doing a phenomenal job. People who used to say, I'll never fly, I don't want to fly a multi-role airplane, I want to stay air superiority, are now saying, I want to get in the F-15E because it's so capable. It is the world's most capable fighter type airplane, we're convinced. The F-15, which was originally designed as a specific air superiority fighter and not for any other role, now finds itself in an E-model, similar to its Phantom forebearer. Ironically, the Air Force wanted and got a dedicated fighter that could beat all oncomers. Now, the original concept has been improved so that a two-seat version, the Strike Eagle, will be able to act as a tactical bomber carrying enormous payloads and still be able to proceed on to the fighter mission as required. Little more could be asked of any fighter aircraft than that now available from the F-15. With its high-flying capacity, the F-15 is also used as a vehicle to carry the LTV, ASAT, anti-satellite missile, which is designed and quite capable of achieving what its description suggests. Spy satellites were a concern for some time to the United States, and an economical way of disposing of them was demonstrated in September 1985, when a U.S. satellite nearing the end of its useful life was sent plummeting down by an ASAT missile launched from an Eagle at a height of 80,000 feet. The basic design of the F-15 lends itself to considerably further development. One approach which is being evaluated is a short takeoff and landing variant. This computer model shows a future possible variation of the F-15. 
swept canards forward of the wing would provide higher maneuverability. Adjustable jet exhausts would alter the direction of their thrust to the aircraft's requirements in any given situation. But its ancestry in the basic eagle is still well defined. Three other nations also utilize the eagle. Japan has approximately 100 in service, and it represents that nation's first line of aerial defense, replacing earlier F-4s. Israel also flies F-15 Eagles, and is one of only two nations to use it in combat. Israel's F-15s have on several occasions downed Syrian MiGs with an almost routine efficiency. The third non-American user of the F-15 is Saudi Arabia. This nation's eagles have also tasted blood in the sensitive area around the Persian Gulf. Iran, still flying F-4s, purchased prior to the revolution, uses this aircraft to patrol the Gulf region. And in June 1984, a small group of F-4s were sent to strike Saudi oil platforms in the Gulf. Patrolling Saudi F-15s were quickly advised of Iranian aircraft by U.S. AWAC radar aircraft high in the sky over the Gulf. Forewarned, the Saudi pilots quickly identified the F-4s, two of which never made it home. I'm retired Colonel Scipio, and the F-15 will be right back on wings. <laughs>